I hit intros, Quan Chi Gao Show, episode one. We kick things off with the introduction of the most popular MMO game, Glory, and the most popular player in Glory, Ye Chu, who is known as the God of Fighting. Chu is signed to the professional team Excellent Era as the team captain because he was so good. He leads the team to three championship victories and creates a name for himself as the best player, but the past couple of years haven't worked out. We are introduced to Su Mu Chang, who goes to attend a meeting with Chu and the Excellent Era management to discuss the future of the team. The management blames Chu for the recent failure, so they're going to bring in a new player, Sun Xiang, to replace him as the captain. They are also going to strip him of his character and give it to Xiang, while Xu is going to be moved down to a training partner. He doesn't want to do that, he wants to actually play, so instead he insists that they terminate his contract, which unfortunately comes with termination fees. Apparently Xu had helped people with money in the past while also denying sponsorship, so he's on that financial struggle. They offer to waive the fees if he signs a contract announcing his retirement, which he does because he has no other choice. Side note, once players do this, they can't come out of retirement for one year. On his way home, he decides to go to an internet cafe where he meets Chen Guo. He ends up asking if he can become a night supervisor since she is the boss of the internet cafe, and she agrees if he pulls an all-nighter. That night just so happens to be the launch of the new 10th server, so a lot of people are starting fresh with new characters. While getting ready for the launch, he tries telling her that he is actually Ye Chu from Excellent Era, but she writes this off as a lie. <laughs> The 10th server launches and he is on that low level grind with a trash quest to get started on his new character Zhu Mo Xiao. He gets a new weapon, the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella, which he seems determined to get upgraded. A random player, Sleeping Moon, invites him to a raid where they're gonna split the loot through dice rolls. During the raid, Xu picks up on the fact that Sleeping Moon is throwing all the other party members under the bus so that he can take all the loot for himself. Once he notices, Xu stops healing him and plans to kill the raid boss without anybody else's help. Episode 2. After the other party members die, he solos the boss and takes all the rare loot. The dropic is that Sleeping Moon had spread the rumor that Shu was actually the one who was trying to take all the loot from the beginning, so he ends up getting a bad reputation for this. He runs back into the same party, Full Moon Guild, and asks them if they want to party up again, which takes some convincing, but they eventually agree, and he ends up soloing another Shadow Cat. Everyone's impressed, so they continue on to the Spider Cave, where he continues to flex and gets them the first kill of the Spider Cave on the 10th server. They run into a hidden boss, so Shu coordinates with the rest of the party, giving them orders on how to fight it, securing the first kill on the hidden boss as well. We jump over to a different guild, Blue Brook, who gets notified that Shu had gotten two first kills, and they are desperate to get first kills for their reputation, so Blue River tries to friend him. Blue River explains to him that they're desperate for first kills, so Shu says that he's gonna help them if they agree to give him a list of rare materials. Back in real life, Guo gives him a place to stay at the internet cafe, so he crashes, and when he wakes up, everybody starts getting the news that he's gonna be retiring. All of Glory is pretty shaken up about this, especially Guo, who is a huge fan. Episode 3. He again tries explaining to Guo that he is actually Ye Chu, but she still doesn't believe him. Jump in game, and Shu is going on the raid with the Blue Brook so that he can get the rare materials that they promised him. They go to clear a huge mob of goblins that usually comes in waves, but he's planning on gathering all of the waves together and killing them all at once. It's pretty much the same formula as the last raid, the party doubts him, he starts flexing how OP he is, and then they come around. During the fighting, they figure out that he's actually using the adventure profession, which is the beginner profession that everybody moves away from, so they're confused as to why he's still using it. He lures all the goblins in at once, and Blue Brook members make quick work of them, setting the new speed record for the Frost Forest raid. Guo brings her friend Tong Ruo to the cafe, where she flaunts her skills in front of a crowd and wins Guo some games. Ruo claims that the game is too easy, so Guo suggests going against Shu. They go head to head for a bit, and people start to realize that he's actually Lord Grimm, the star of the 10th server. Anyways, he slaughters her, and she keeps re-challenging him over and over just to lose again. She's never been beaten like this before, so she wants to get better to catch up to Shu. Episode 4. Ruo decides to create a new character after losing to Shu. Guo recommends Battle Mage because that's what Ye Chu played as on Excellent Era. We find out that the reason Chu plays Classless is because his custom weapon makes it OP. When Shu finds out that Ruo is going to be playing a Battle Mage, he makes her some videos to help teach her how to play the class. The world boss Blood Gunner makes his appearance, so the top three guilds Blue Brook, Herb Garden, and Tyrannical Ambition go there to secure the first kill. While the guilds are arguing amongst themselves, a brawler named Steam Bun Invasion shows up with Shu and starts fighting with the boss. The guilds see that Shu is going to be able to kill the boss, so they start trying to bribe him to join their group so they can get first kill credit. He ignores them, so they all go in to try and KS the boss. Shu orders his group to retreat, and once they are clear, he enrages the Blood Gunner so it spawns 100 zombies that keep the three guilds busy. Meanwhile, he lures Blood Gunner away to Full Moon Guild so that they can all fight the boss and get the first kill on it. After that, Blue River writes him and wants his help to beat the Frost Forest record again, but he says that he already agreed to help Tyrannical Ambition. In the last scene, Shu gets a notification that his record in Frost Forest Raid got smashed by seven minutes by Excellent Dynasty, which is Excellent Era's guild. Episode 5. Shu is going to be helping Blue Brook retake the record with the party he is putting together. The next night, Excellent Era has a match against Team 301. Shu watches the 3v3 match where they go 1v1 until one side runs out of players. Soon Jiang beats the first two by himself and is fighting the last member of Team 301 without needing the help of his 
his two teammates. Shu speculates that this is because Team 301 is throwing the 3v3 match so that Shung doesn't perform as well in the 5v5. Jump ahead to the 5v5 and Shung gets caught up in a fight with the Grind King and can't get out of it. Wu Chong tries helping from a distance but is intercepted because of Shung's poor team play and they end up losing. We meet Liu Hao, the vice captain for Excellent Era and the one responsible for breaking the record in Frost Forest. He goes into the cafe and finds Shu working there. Hao doesn't like Shu because he was always yelled at by him when Shu was on Excellent Era. They argue a bit with Shu saying that Hao should have controlled Shung during the match and then he kicks him out. To beat the new record in Frost Forest, Shu gets Ruo and Steam Bun Invasion, the dumb brawler, to help him. And the surprise member helping them is Su Mu Chong, the gunner from Excellent Era. Episode 6. Eventually, they help Tyrannical Ambition set the new record of 13 minutes 5 seconds, beating out Excellent Dynasty. Excellent Dynasty responds back, beating the record again and retaining the best time. Hao suspects that it's highly probable that Lord Grimm is actually Shu, so he makes an account to sabotage him. He friends him under the name Hateful Sword to spy on him. Shu ends up allowing him to do a boneyard run with him to try and set the new record. Prior to the run, Shu had devised a new strategy to easily achieve the new record time for the Boneyard Dungeon. Meanwhile, Excellent Era and Blue Rain have an official match where Hao gets bodied by Huang Xiaotian because he was focusing too much on a sabotage. Get off, get off, get off. This ends up costing Excellent Era the match, but despite his loss, he still wants to get back at Shu. Hao and Excellent Dynasty steal the plan that Shu had made and use it to set the new Boneyard record. Shu had figured out that Hateful Sword is actually Hao, so he tells him that he's been exposed and Hao dips. Later, Huang Xiaotian, the vice captain of Blue Rain that just dumpstered Hao in their match, stops by the cafe in full-on incognito mode. Him and Shu are friends and go way back, so he agrees to help with the record. Shu explains his plan of trapping monsters as well as the second boss in a crack which will allow them to save time. Pretty sure streamers these days will get banned for this on Twitch, but who knows with their ban inconsistencies. In the last scene, everybody meets up with Blue Brook and get ready to break the Boneyard record. Episode 7. Shu and the team are able to beat the record by 32 seconds and Hao finds out that Xiao Tian was actually helping them in the raid. Xiao Tian asks Shu why he retired and he explains what happened. He goes into a little bit more detail in saying that the reason he didn't transfer teams is because Mu Chong would have terminated her contract to follow him, so he retired instead. Mu Chong's contract is over in a year and a half, so that's when he's planning on returning to the pro scene. Later on, while she was training with Ruo and Steam Bun, they get attacked by the herb guarded leader Planigo C. Shu and Planigo Seed square off, and Shu ends up winning, of course, but during the fight, he had realized that the player using Planigo Seed was actually Wayne GXC, which is the captain of the competitive team Tiny Herb. In response to his loss, GXC tells the members of the Tiny Herb to go and kill Shu. They come in force, and Shu doesn't have a choice but to fight him off, which he makes look easy. At this point, GXC says that he's 80% sure that Lord Grimm is actually Ye Chu, the greatest boss in history. In the last scene, we get a quick look at the Team Samsara captain and the champion of last season's glory tournament, Zhao Sakai. <laughs> Episode 8! Chu continues training with Herb Garden, which is also helping him level up Lord Grimm in the process. He suggests a new format of training. Instead of fighting them in groups like he's been doing, he's gonna duel with them one on one. But the condition is that every time they want to duel with him, they have to beat Ruo in a duel first. He makes this condition so that Ruo can get the practice that she needs against the pro players. The second condition for dueling with him is that they have to bet rare materials so that he can continue upgrading their gear. One of the tiny Herb players, Chao Yifan, goes against Ruo, and it takes him a bit to win, so he gets flamed by the team bully Xiao Yun. After the fight with Ruo, he's able to go against Shu, but before they fight, Shu suggests that the Ghostblade class might be more befitting to his playstyle. Now it's time for Shu to go against the captain, GXC, but this time he's gonna be on his main character. They have an epic fight where GXC is pushed to his limits, but the fight ultimately ends in a draw. Later on, Ruo mentions that GXC was impressed with her during the duel, so he offered her a position in the Tiny Herb training division, but she turned him down. Yifan decides to take Shu's advice and creates a new Ghostblade character. And the next day, we finally get to meet the player behind Steam Bun Invasion, Bao Rong Xin. <laughs> Episode 9. A lot of guilds are upset with Shu because he set up a deal with Full Moon Guild to set a record in the Desolate Land Dungeon for a really cheap price. The guilds keep trying to bribe him with offers to help them instead and are irritated that he's turning them down because he agreed to help Full Moon first. He follows through on his word and sets the new record in the dungeon with Full Moon. Blue Brook feel like their reputation is being threatened since they're losing to such a small guild like Full Moon. Because of this, Blue River is forced to go to the Heavenly Domain to get advice from the main leader, Changing Spring. Meanwhile, Shu, Rongxing, and Ruo go shopping for new weapons. While bartering, Shu notices that some players are following him. Jump over to Desolate Lands, Rongxing notices that somebody's following them again, so he goes to attack them with his new claw weapon. It's actually Chao Yifan on his new Ghostblade account, but Rongxing had noticed somebody else before. A bunch of guildless players ambush the four of them, and they all start fighting, giving Yifan the chance to practice team fights with his new character. We see that the three major guild leaders are watching from a distance, suggesting that they're not the ones responsible for this attack. Even though they're outnumbered with the coordination and the strategies from Shu, they're still able to win. When Blue River went to talk with the main guild leader, he sent Poplar Beach over to the 10th server to help break the desolate land record. Turns out he has other plans and wants to fight with Shu, but ends up getting 2v1 by Shu and Buns, losing the fight. Even though we lost that fight, Blue Brook still managed to beat the desolate land records later. After the fight changing spring, the main leader of the Blue Brook meets with Shu, who tells him that they would have done better in the dungeon if Blue River was leading it instead of Poplar Beach, making Blue River's 
heart flutter. Still, nobody is sure who the group was that launched the initial ambush on Shu. Jump over to the excellent era building where Chen Yuhui is raging at his computer, suggesting that they were the ones responsible. This guy has a problem with Shu because when he tried to go pro, he was shot down, so he blames Shu because he was the captain at the time. While chatting with Tufan, Shu tells him that they can beat the Desolate Land records, but they're gonna need his ghost blade. Episode 10. Poplar Beach had been wanting to 1v1 with Chu, so he finally agrees and wins while playing on Guo's Gunner account. The captain of Blue Brain, Yu Wen Zhao, is watching the match and after thinking about it for a bit, figures out that it's actually Shu playing. He also did after that his teammate Huang Xiaotian had helped Shu set the Boneyard record and that Hal was hateful blade spying on Shu. Xiaotian was trying to hide this from his captain, but Wen Zhao's powers of deduction are too OP. Jump on over to Ruo, who comes across a dungeon guide by an unknown player named Concealed Light. Xiaotian messages Shu to let him know that Wen Zhao had figured out his identity and now he wants to duel with him. Shu agrees and fights against Wen Zhao who is using his Warlock main. Wen Zhao is known for having a slower APM and relies more on his game sense to carry his fights, which isn't enough and he loses to Shu. Afterwards, while they're talking, he tells Shu that the Unspecialized will likely lose its early level advantages once he gets to around level 95. Later on, Shu takes an interest in the Concealed Light player who wrote the dungeon guide. Even though he's a noob to glory, he figured out how to make a guide from his imagination. Mu Chung comes by later so that they could play together, but while playing, they figure out that all their members are being targeted and Ru was killed. Episode 11. While fleeing from attackers, Rong Jing runs into Concealed Light, the guy who wrote the dungeon guides who was looking for him. Rong Jing is able to escape with the help of Concealed Light giving him directions. Once they get a chance, Rong Jing contacts Shu, who tells him to go to Kanji Forest, and Concealed Light tags along to tell him the safest path. Shu is being chased by a mob of players, and we find out that this is actually a joint operation between multiple guilds, led by Yahui to slow down Shu. The guilds taking part in the operation are Excellent Dynasty, Herb Garden, Samsara, Misty Castle, Blossom Valley, and Void Walk. Blue River was also invited, but he ended up turning him down. While fleeing from the mob, Shu is spammed out by Xiao Tian, who is wanting to duel with him. Shu agrees to the duel, so he tells him to come to the forest as well. When Xiao Tian arrives at the forest, he is also targeted by the mob, so Shu tells him that he's gonna have to fight him. Xiao Tian just wants to fight with Shu, until one of the players calls him trash, because he's only level 27, so he dumpsters a guy and his friend while taking one of their swords. After that, he sets his sights back on Shu, but they get interrupted again by more mobs. They're faring pretty well against the mobs, but eventually start running low on mana, and are surrounded by the 18 remaining members. This conveniently cues the entrance of Mu Chong, Rong Xing, Yu Fan, Ruo, and Kinsu. Sealed Light, who all show up to help them fight. In the end, this is enough to fight off all the guilds, despite being outnumbered. Episode 12. The guilds are persistent and trying to prevent Shu and the others from leveling by keeping them out of the dungeons, but this isn't going to be enough to stop them. Shu decides to go for the wild boss of Lion Canyon that had just appeared. Meanwhile, the leader of Tyrannical Ambition goes to the Tyranny headquarters to ask the captain of the Tyranny pro team, Han Wenqing, for help with Shu. The captain is busy, so he has to talk to Zhang Jinxie, who is the vice captain of Tyranny. After watching some of Lord of Grimm's gameplay, Jinxie says that it's probably Ye Chu playing him. When they present this to Wen Qing, he doesn't believe them, so they're given several 10 accounts to go find out. The Tyranny members skirmish with Shu for a bit, and then Wen Qing steps in to fight him. We get a little backstory on Wen Qing and Shu from nine years ago, where they were both undefeated in an arena and about to have a duel. We don't see who wins, but we jump ahead just a bit where Shu and Excellent Era defeat Wen Qing and Tyranny in the first glory tournament. Back to the present, even though nobody wins a fight, Shu assures Wen Qing that he's gonna return to the pro scene. In the last scene after the credits, Guo had gotten some uniforms for the members, which made me realize I hate outros. 